I'm a lonely Goomba, stuck between two pipes. Well, guess I keep on gaming for the rest of my life. Well, uh, I sure have been covering a lot of Donkey Kong on this channel lately, so I figured why not change it up by uh, doubling down and playing literally every single version of the arcade Donkey Kong game ever made. I mean, how many could there be, right? Uh, right? Uh, oh man, that video runtime is pretty long. Maybe I should back out whilst I still have the chance. Nah. But first, let's establish some rules, shall we? First off, if the game is a direct port with literally no differences, or if it's just an emulator running a ROM on a different console, I ain't gonna include it. Say for example, Animal Crossing on the GameCube technically has Donkey Kong on it, but it's just emulating the NES game, so uh, it ain't on the list. So uh, just keep that in mind before leaving an angry comment, which I probably won't even read anyway. But uh, yeah, I have a feeling I might regret doing this now, but alas, Let's go all the way back to 1981, back when arcades were actually a thing and Nintendo were just finding their footing in the gaming industry. Let's start this off with the OG Donkey Kong, uh, see how it holds up. Surprisingly, a lot of people haven't actually played the original version. Most people I speak to have played the NES one, since Nintendo tends to re-release that one the most. And something interesting about this game is, you don't actually play the stages in order. You gotta do multiple runs, and each one adds a new stage to the mix, which makes it pretty hard to actually experience all the levels. I mean, honestly, this game is really hard. Donkey he can't get messing around here. He throws barrels all over the place. Sometimes we bounce around, sometimes he throws them straight down, and sometimes he seems to know where you're gonna go. And if one of those blue barrels makes it to that oil barrel at the bottom, a fire enemy appears. So if you spend too long here, it's gonna get a bit out of control if you're not careful. The other stages though are much easier in comparison, but because most of the random element is gone and it's more just simple patterns. This stage for instance is really easy outside of the very top platform. The timing on those springs can be pretty tough, but once you get it down, it's no problem. And on the third cycle of the game, you get the Pie Factory stage. The legendary Pie Factory stage, which is missing from the NES version. The neglected Donkey Kong stage. But the stage itself is reasonably simple. With a bit of luck, you can just blast through it in a few seconds. Although, on the fourth cycle onwards, it can get a bit messy with all these fire enemies. And it doesn't help that the conveyor belt just changes direction, often causing you to walk into a pie. A deadly pie. I knew I never should have trusted pies. They're evil. And uh, at the final stage, which is alright. You've got to walk over all these little platforms in order to make Donkey Kong fall down and die so you can rescue your first love, Pauline. Just uh, don't tell Peach, okay? Something to consider with this game is that the hammer is not that reliable. Well, in the sense that you can't just walk into everything willy-nilly with the expectations you'll be untouchable. It's not like Smash Bros. You've got to actually pay attention and make sure that the hammer lines up with the barrels. Oh, and uh, if you want to just play the stages in order without having to dedicate a ton of time to the game, the Japanese version just plays the stages in order. Which is probably better, let's be honest, especially if you're just want to have a casual playthrough. But overall, yeah, it's a classic, and the gold standard for which every other game on this video will be compared to. So uh, I shall give this game a 10 out of 10, and it goes right at the top of the Donkey Kong leaderboards. But yeah, uh, next up, and we're going portable. Check out this bad boy. It's part of the Coleco Tabletop Series, and uh, yeah, uh, okay, um, uh, I mean, let's give this some slack. It is an early handheld game, and it's very ambitious given what it's trying to emulate, but let's be real, this is nearly unplayable. Mario just doesn't control all that well. I think they're trying to copy the movement speed of the arcade game, but all it does is make you feel like you have no consistent control. And it doesn't help that you can literally walk off the edge of the screen and die, which will happen more than you think. The first few times it happened, I couldn't figure out what was going on. I thought Mario had just spontaneously decided to stop living or something. But eventually, after many tries, you'll make it to the top and there's actually a second level. And like the arcade game, you just need to walk over these platforms to win. Meaning though, that you have to jump and move at the same time. Which is just a borderline impossible to do. And that's it. It's just those two stages over and over again. Now, 
Let's never speak of this again. It's got to be a 1 out of 10 for me. Moving swiftly on, and Coleco gave it another go. This time on the newly released ColecoVision. I mean, look at this thing. It's a beast. And yeah, now we're talking. This looks pretty good. Mario feels about right. The visuals are good. All the sound effects are here. I mean, granted, Donkey Kong has decided to switch sides and chill on the right this time, but it's cool with me. It's cool. But the game ain't perfect. Mario is really slow to climb these ladders. Although, if you keep spamming the direction, sometimes the game will glitch and it'll speed up. Speed fun strats right there, fellas. The hammer is also way OP in this game. You don't have to worry about timing or anything. It's essentially just an invincibility item. Just run into everything as much as you like and you'll be fine. I ain't complaining. This stage is pretty good too. Not much to say, but it works well. The only issue really is for enemies to instantly respawn on these spots here. So, if you have a hammer, you can just stand there and the points will roll in. Although, on the other side of a coin, be careful as you'll pretty much instantly die once the hammer runs out. And after that stage, we're taken to this one. Which is a bit of a weird order, really. Well, at least it's in the game, I suppose. I guess they couldn't get those spring obstacles to work, though. So they just replaced them with those fire guys. Which makes the stage way easier and kind of misses the whole point. Sometimes these fire dudes will just chill at the top with Pauline, too. And after completing that stage, we're back here. And then we go back here. And then we're back at stage one. And then we're straight to the final stage. What a confusing stage order. I, I can't wrap my head around it. And the pie stage is missing. Why? What did that pie stage do to you? I like pie. But uh, despite the lack of pie, this is a solid little version of the game. And I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Next up, and it's time to check out the Atari 2600 version. This was also released in 1982, the same year as the Coleco version. Although, looking at it, you wouldn't think so. Not to knock the Atari too much, but you've been outmatched. This is as basic as it gets. And Donkey Kong up here looks a bit like a Goomba. If he, uh, started working out. And, uh, grew some arms, I suppose. And the bowels are looking a bit more like chocolate chip cookies which is probably an improvement on Bowers actually, but how does it play? Well, it's okay. It'll take some time getting used to Mario's, uh, quite frankly, pathetic jump. Uh, he was called Jumpman, yet here I am, struggling to clear a single barrel. Otherwise though, uh, the controls are actually oddly responsive. I can't knock it. The second stage though, and uh, well, things fare a bit worse here. I guess programming these ghosts to move up and down was asking a bit too much for the old Atari 2600. So they just slide side to side, making this hammer here almost completely pointless. And that's it. There's only two stages. I think it's supposed to get harder with each run too, but honestly, I couldn't tell the difference. And again, the pie stays missing. We're four games in, and only one of them had the bleeding pie stage. It's unforgivable. So yeah, the game isn't great, but you can tell they were working within the limitations of the system. So it gets a gold star for effort, but I'm also giving it a 2 out of 10. Sorry. Well, let's see how our next contender fares. V in television. And man, again with the weird dial controllers. Probably for the best we never stuck around, really. And, uh, you know what? Perhaps I was a bit too harsh on my old Atari just then. What the heck is going on here? Although, I've got to admit, I kinda like how it looks in a minimalistic kind of way. Not sure what's going on with DK though. I mean, I kinda see it, but on the other hand, again, it looks like a Goomba if they only focused on leg day and got some big goofy teeth. Uh, here's an artist uh, rendition. But uh, how's the gameplay then? Well, it's not amazing. The main issue is jumping over barrels. It, it isn't right. You have to jump way earlier than you would ever think to clear them. Otherwise, you just won't be at the peak of the jumping time. The hammers are also here, but uh, you've got to be really close to the enemies for it to work. Sometimes, you'll be trying to hit stuff, but it just ain't happening. The good news is, Mario climbs ladders super fast here. He ain't wasting no time. Makes the game a lot easier. So, once you get the jumping sorted, it's actually a really easy version of the game. The game also only has two stages again. The second stage being uh, relatively simple, especially since you can just generally outrun the ghost due to your climbing speed. However, this version has the same problem as the ColecoVision, in which the ghost enemies instantly respawn in these spots. It's annoying. I got a hammer here, but 
more blammo. Enemy instantly appears and I'm dead. But to praise one aspect of the game, since the hammer has no special music this time, we made it change colour when it's about to run out, which is uh, pretty handy as it's surprisingly hard to tell without the music playing. Other than that, uh, the game is ridiculously easy, but luckily it does have four difficulty options. Uh, I don't think the game actually gets harder as it progresses, it just seems to stay the same until you get a game over and then you change the difficulty, but it's better than nothing. So uh, what would I rank it? Well, it's a bit better than the Atari version, on the basis that enemies on the second stage can actually go up and down ladders, but uh, that's about it. So I'll give it a 3 out of 10. Next and E. It's Nintendo's turn to come back and save us from this ocean of disappointment with the Game & Watch version of Donkey Kong. I did question whether to include this since it is quite a bit different from the source material but uh, screw it, it's going in. And look, it has two screens just like the Nintendo DS. That's how you know it was ahead of its time. The game itself then and uh, the basics are still here. You gotta jump over barrels and make it to the top, only there's more. See, once you get to the top, you gotta flick this little switch and then jump on this swinging hook within the time limit. Get it right and you unhatch a hook from Donkey Kong's platform and eventually he will fall down. But time it wrong and well, you die. As your score gets higher, girders start to appear here, so you've got to consider what's above you before jumping. And the game just keeps getting faster, which despite the limitations, can be pretty thrilling. And when you get really good, you can just hit the switch and make it to the crane in one swing. It feels good, really good. This is actually really great. And unlike that Coleco handheld game, Mario controls really good. One button press moves Mario one space. Complete controller, how it should be. There's also a game B, which is generally just a harder version. There's more barrels, girders are right there from the start, but otherwise it's mostly the same. But yeah, it's not really emulating the arcade game. More so taking inspiration from it, but uh, I'm going to include it. It works within the limitations of the system instead of trying to emulate the arcade game and failing. For real though, this is one of the best Donkey Kong games so far, so given this an 8 out of 10, it's worth checking out. On to the next game then, and will it hold up against the surprisingly good Game & Watch? Well, we're going back to Atari with the 8-bit family computer series. We're now in 1983, a year has passed since Atari's last attempt, so uh, let's see how it holds up. And wow, talk about an improvement. Mario controls alright, he's got a nice big jump this time. Don't know why these games keep putting DK on the wrong side of the screen though. He's been on the left, the middle, and the right in the span of a few games. I'm half expecting him to be chilling at the bottom of the screen next time. Talking about DK, cheer up lad, why are you looking so sad? I think all these bad ports are starting to get to him here. He's holding back the tears. Anyway, the game and uh, the first stage is pretty solid. The next stage works fine too, it, it looks nice, and everything works as it should. Can't say the same for this stage though, I mean, it works well for the most part, but the springs don't fall in the same space every time. What's that about? Sometimes they fall so far to the right that they kill you on this platform. That platform's supposed to be a safe space, you've just turned the whole foundation of the stage upside down. And on the third cycle of levels, the pattern of the springs just flat out changes. I don't think I've ever seen another Donkey Kong game do that. But now for the real question, is the pie stage here? Will the curse be broken at last? Well, I have good news, prepare yourselves, because it's the pie stage, yes, and it plays pretty well. Granted, you can't see what direction the conveyor belts are going, and the ladders don't move, but still, they did it. So yeah, this version not only plays pretty well, it has the pie stage. It's gotta be a solid 7 out of 10 for me. Would have been an 8 if we got the springs working properly, yeah. I think I'll send a letter to Atari uh, telling them to patch it in a... Well you know what, I think it's time for a little breather. How are you hanging in there? You sick of hearing me talk about Donkey Kong yet? Or are you in it for the long run? I don't know, but look, we're too far in now to just quit. We're on a mission. We're in this together. Don't do it for me. Don't even do it for yourself. Do it for Donkey Kong. He could probably do with some cheering up. Anyway, uh, next game, and we're moving on to a Commodore 64. And look, we get a nice little loading screen. And look, Mario has this modern color scheme for some reason. So already this game is ahead of the curve. 
the game then gives you a difficulty selection, but uh, with no indication what any of these symbols mean. Barrel difficulty? Fire difficulty? I have no idea what's going on, and the instruction box doesn't even tell you. First impressions of the gameplay is a bit rough too. The game suffers from the old awkward to climb ladder syndrome. Seriously, it's so annoying when you try to climb a ladder and you just can't do it. But otherwise, it controls pretty well. Again, it uses the same stage order as the arcade one, which is annoying for me because it means I need to get good enough at these games to do three cycles again. And man, it is not easy. I don't know why, but this is probably the most difficult version I've played yet. I think the problem is, Mario just moves so bleeding slow, it's actually painful how slow he is. And the game is just relentless with these fire enemies on this level, there's always 5 of them at a time and they just instantly respawn. Mario is in no rush to climb these ladders, but these fire enemies move up and down like they're late for their dentist appointment or something, it just feels a bit unfair at times. On the second cycle, we unlock this stage, and uh, it's pretty solid. The problem again is Mario, he's too slow that the tried and trusted technique of waiting for the spring to bounce over your head and then legging it to the top doesn't work. You gotta go all the way here and then climb up like a chump. And guess what? The pie stage makes a return once more. It, it must be Christmas. Although, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wish it didn't return. Sweet mother of mercy, they made the stage way, way too hard. It's these bleeding fire buggers again, they just spawn way too often that you'll barely ever have an opening to actually get up there. Seriously, I died so many times on this stage, which is annoying because it takes 3 cycles to even get to attempt it. It just feels unintentionally difficult more than anything. You let me down pie stage, you let me down. Overall though, well, the game is okay, you know, maybe I was just playing on a higher difficulty without realising it because it's bloody hard, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad you know, so uh, I'm thinking a 6 out of 10. But wait, we're not done with the Commodore quite yet, because we're moving on to the Commodore VIC-20. Just look at this thing, it's cute isn't it? Same can't quite be said for the game though, I guess we did play too many decent games in a row there, gotta turn the quality down a bit. Or that's what you might be thinking looking at this, but in perhaps the biggest shock of the decade, I quite like this. I don't know what to say, yes it looks pretty bad, but again it has that uh, minimalistic charm to it, like a modern indie game almost. And it controls well too, which is good, because the game is pretty fast, it's kinda like if Donkey Kong was just stripped down to the core basics, and it works. I really do quite like this, I played through 4 cycles just for fun. Anyway then, onto the levels, and again, it has the arcade structure, so I've got to dedicate some time to this. This level here works well, the platforming is pretty forgiving, and the springs work as intended, which is always a bonus. And the final stage is also here as expected, and it's fun. Really, I think I'm just liking this more than I should, because Mario is fast and he doesn't take a lifetime to climb ladders. It's just very fast paced, and on top of that, they actually did a unique ending animation, which is probably better than the original. So uh, imagine that. But I know what you're thinking. Yo Goomba, where's the pie level at? And well, what's more, it has made it in the game. We're on a combo now ladies and gentlemen. And look, they even animated the conveyor belts this time. Which I think is a first. This would almost be perfect, but again, the ladders don't move. They came so close, but they didn't quite get it right. And there you go then, you know, maybe I am overpraising this a bit, but I did have a lot of fun. Yeah, it isn't particularly faithful to the arcade original in terms of how it feels, but uh, it still feels good to play, so I'll take it. Gets a 7 out of 10 from me, and you know, it was quite a nice surprise. Wait, what's that noise? What's that all powerful presence I feel around me? Oh god, it's time. It's time for Nintendo to show us how it's done. They've had enough of these subpar Donkey Kong games and are about to make a stand with the official version of Donkey Kong on the Famicom. See, this is probably the version most Nintendo fans have played, on the basis Nintendo re-releases this version the most. Luckily, they did a really good job. Visually, it's perfect. Controls are great. Heck, I might even say the controls are a bit better than the arcade original since it seems a bit easier climbing ladders. It's a near perfect recreation of the original, but there are some issues. One, the bleeding pie stage is missing again. On the official Nintendo version of the game, that is just unforgivable. 
I just don't get it. Is it hard to program? Does Nintendo just not like it? Why isn't it in the game? And the second point is, uh, well, it's not really an issue, but it's definitely way, way easier than the original. I'd say it takes about three or four loops to even get close to the arcade version. Which is not a bad thing in itself, but it makes it all less authentic to the arcade game. It does eventually get the same frantic feeling of the original, and playing on game B does speed it up a bit, but yeah, this is definitely much easier. I guess it wasn't designed to just gobble up quarters. Overall, it's a near perfect version of the game, but the pie level is missing. I mean, even the bleeding Vic 20 at the pie level, and who's ever heard of a Vic 20? No one, that's who, but I can't overlook just how good everything else is, so uh, it gets an 8 from me. Next up then, and it's time to get a bit more obscure. With the Texas Instruments TI-99 slash 4A. I guess no matter the computer, there's always a demand for Donkey Kong. And well, DK in waiting around here, he's throwing barrels before the player can even move. I gotta say though, this version is great. Visually, it looks alright. Controls wise, it feels great. But like always, I gotta get to the third cycle of stages to find out if that pie stage is here. Cause that's all we're really here for at the end of the day, to see if it has the pie level or not. But first, it does have this stage. Only, they couldn't program the bleeding springs. They didn't even replace them with fire or something in this version. They're just gone. So the stage is ridiculously easy to the extent it might as well not even be here. Uh, a bit of a blemish on the game to be honest, but the final stage is decent at least. I think generally speaking, if Mario moves fast enough, it elevates the entire game. And yep, the pie stage is here, outdoing the NES version again. For shame Nintendo, for shame. The moving ladders are missing again, and the conveyor belts are not animated, which look, you kinda need to know which way they're going in order to time your jumps properly, but uh, otherwise it's a good recreation and I'm happy it's here. See, the thing about this version is, it comes so close to being good, it's all here, but it's just lacking that extra level of polish, and the mission springs is a bit of a deal breaker. If they fix that, it'll probably be pretty close to the NES version in a lot of ways, but uh, as it is, I'll give it a low 7. You did a good job Texas Instruments TI99 forward slash 4A, you did good. Next up then, and perhaps you've heard of this company. Apple. They are quite obscure, but back in the day, they were making this beast of a machine, the Apple II. And sure enough, it had Donkey Kong on it. Just look at this title screen though. The Virgin Mario. The game though, and uh... Oh no. Oh no you guys. This is bad. I, I don't know where to start. Donkey Kong is made from these weird dots. Mario's legs are moving at the speed of Sonic the Hedgehog, and the colours change when you overlap ladders. Like, look, I'm sure that Apple II was a fine machine, and it probably played a big role into where we are today, but this is utterly shit. It's really bad you guys. The controls are otherworldly bad. The jumping is so stilted. You just stop all movement and speed and just awkwardly follow this arc. And you know what sucks? I gotta do three runs of this just to see if that bastard pie stage is here. And I kid you not, this took me hours, hours upon hours. Like, I was playing this for half the bleeding day. The dedication was real. The elevator level is here and uh... Yeah, this control is so bad, you'll either walk off the ledge or just fall through the floor. Take your pick. And yes, the pie stage is here. Even the absolute worst version of Donkey Kong managed to get the pie stage in. And oh my god, they even got the ladders moving. This is a first. Literally the first one to have the ladders moving. It's just a shame about everything else. I mean look, this is bad. It looks bad. And it's worse to play than it looks. I'm just glad I will never ever have to play this again. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. It's a 1 out of 10. Next up, and we're playing the MS-DOS version and... Uh, oh my god, you've got to be kidding me. It's the same as the Apple version, but worse. They actually somehow made it worse. First up, DK looks like he's just crawled up from the depths of hell itself. Sweet mother of mercy, that is a scary looking Donkey Kong. I mean, are those horns? But why is he pink? Wait a minute. Demon? Pink? Hell? Pinky? Doom? Doom was launched on the MS-DOS? It's all connected! Donkey Kong seems pretty happy with himself though. Instead of banging his chest, he sort of just looks like he's flexing. Look at him, he's loving it, the cheeky git. I suppose if you got it, you might as well float it. 
But yeah, I'm just avoiding the elephant in the room at this point. There's something in this game which makes it worse than the Apple version. So, so much worse. At first I thought, well, maybe my game's glitched or something. But no, from my research, it's just how the game plays. It's so bad. The thing is, Mario doesn't stop moving. You press right and you will continue to move right forever. You press left and you will do the same. The only way to get Mario to stop moving is to press up or down. It is borderline impossible to play like this. I couldn't even beat the second stage. I just spent hours on this Apple version and now you expect me to do it again with the world's worst control scheme ever made. I may be an idiot but even I have standards. It's not only the worst version of Donkey Kong so Far, it probably has the worst controls I've ever played in a game. I give it a 0 out of 10. Whoever programmed this should feel bad. You know, I think I need a pick me up. And luckily, I got a rare gem here for you. Because our good friends at Coleco tried again with the Coleco Adam version of the game. Is it third time lucky? Well, let's see. And at a glance, it looks pretty similar to the first Coleco version one we played uh, near the start of the video. But there are a few changes which massively improve it. First, they've added back the missing springy things in this stage. In case you forgot, they were missing before. Granted, they could probably do with bouncing a bit higher, but otherwise, it is nice to see them back. And best of all, they added the missing pie stage from the previous version. The Mad Men did it. They went back and fixed it. It. So, honestly, in a very bizarre twist, this might actually be better than the NES version. I mean, it plays well, it feels good, it looks decent, and it has all the stages in the entirety. The only real flaw I can think of is uh, climbing ladders. It just doesn't quite feel right. I'm sure it's something you can get used to, but stuff like this happens more than you'd like. It's pretty annoying, and this jump on the pie stage is way harder than it really should be. So, despite the positives, I'm still gonna say that NES version is better just due to the higher polish and better controls. But this is still right near the top of the Donkey Kong leaderboards. Just a uh, good luck finding this one. The Coleco Adam flops so bad that the game is pretty damn hard to find. Difficult, really. But yeah, I'm giving this an 8 out of 10. A very solid version indeed. So, uh, after that, there's a bit of a gap between releases. The last game released in 1984, watched out next game released in 1986, which in Donkey Kong port years is basically a decade. And well, with the Amstrad CPC, it seems like the time was well spent. This version is also great. I mean, it took some liberties with the visuals, but I like it. It even has some shading on DK. We're on next level stuff now. Something I particularly like about this version is that they didn't squish the screen to make it fit. They kept the original aspect ratio from the arcade game. And Donkey Kong behaves much closer to the original game too. He even throws those blue barrels, which, uh, thinking about it, they barely show up in any of the other versions. But yeah, Mario controls well, climbing ladders is easy, and the game also just plays through the stages in order in one cycle like the Japanese arcade release, which I do actually prefer. And the pie stage is here too, and it has moving ladders. It has everything. You can even make that jump easily as intended. They nailed it. Every stage feels great. It's not a one-to-one -one recreation, but it doesn't really matter because the game has all the stages, it looks good, and it plays well. I'm kind of shocked, but this is the best port of Donkey Kong so far. Other than the arcade one, it's the best version for sure. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Why not a 10? Well, these platforms are a bit too narrow. I mean, come on, people. That's like the most important thing. Next game then, and we're back on the Commodore 64. See, we played this machine earlier, but that version was developed by the Americans. Three years later, and the Europeans wanted to show us how it was done. And to the surprise of no one, of course it's better. Visually, it looks better, and it has all the stages this time. They also play in order again, like the Japanese version. I guess that was uh, catching on at this point. And the pie stage is yet again perfect. Perfect. I mean, really, it's very similar to the previous version we just played. I mean, it was made by the same developer. However, perhaps I missed this problem before, or perhaps it's unique to this version. But there are some problems. One major problem, which kind of ruins the game, unfortunately. See, on this stage, if you jump and hit the side of a platform, 
you will die from fall damage even if you only fell an inch and landed. And this happened to me a few times, enough that it became a noticeable problem. It doesn't even make sense, it makes you have to overthink every jump on the stage. Which is a shame because if it wasn't for that one thing, this would also be getting a 9. But as it is, everything else is nearly perfect so it's gonna have to be a pretty high 7. Well, uh, believe it or not, we're actually near the end of our journey. But uh, no time to get sentimental. We've got to keep the pace going with the MSX version of Donkey Kong. And well, DK goes from looking slightly horrifying to a small little boy in the span of a few seconds. Well then again, have you seen Pauline? Looks like a headless chicken. Don't know what's going on here, but the game itself. And, well, it's just okay. Oddly enough, the first stage is probably the worst one, which is like the most important stage in the game. But they at least try to make it like the arcade game. Donkey Kong has those blue barrels again, but uh, jumping over these barrels just feels a little touch and go. And as with most of these 1986 versions, we just play the stages in order. So we get to the pie stage, which whilst it's still nice to see, it has basically been overshadowed by the other versions at this point. And all the stages are here. And we play quite well. All the right techniques work and all the speeds seem about right, so uh, I'd say 75% of this game is pretty solid. But that first stage, nah, it is just not great. Overall, the game is okay, but I guess the standard has been set a bit higher, so uh, I'm kind of torn, but I'm gonna go with my gut and give it a 6. Moving on to the ZX Spectrum. And look, it's basically the same as the one we just played, only it looks worse, and I think it plays a bit worse actually. See, these fire guys are just way too fast. They will make a beeline to the top of the stage almost instantly. And again, the ladders are wrong. The whole point really is that the shorter ladders are further along, whilst the longer ladders cut out some of the stage, so it's a bit of a risk and reward, you know? But all the ladders are basically the same length here, so we are basically bugged that up. And like last time, the other stages are good, but uh, I'm just not liking these opening stages. It's not great. Now to top it off, Donkey Kong sounds like he's having a wet fart every time you start the game. Well, this game is a waste fart, but really, it's pretty much the same, so it's gonna be a 6-2. Well, anyways, uh, after that game, we have another gap in releases, and we don't see the next Donkey Kong port till 1988. The last time this happened, we had a big jump in quality, so let's see how this version on the Atari 7800 holds up. And well, visually, this is nice. The screen is squished, but otherwise, it looks perfect. And the second stage is solid too. Although, they made this jump way too easy, to the extent it's probably easier just skipping out off the stage than doing it the intended route. And the final stage works perfectly too, but uh, there's no pie stage. What the bleeding heck is this? This released in 1988 and is one of, if not the last version of the game, and they couldn't even manage the bleeding pie stage. Why? I don't understand it. But otherwise, the game is good. But there's no pie stage, so that kind of drags it down. So if you can look past that, uh, this is a very enjoyable version, but you might as well just play the NES version, you know? So I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. And well, there's only one version left now, and I'm not even sure it counts, but uh, I'm gonna count it anyway. But first, let's just take a little look at the games that didn't quite qualify to be in the list, but I wanna talk about anyway. First up, the Game Boy game, which does start off like the original arcade game, but really, it's a completely original game with a focus on puzzle platforming. It's an absolutely brilliant game, and I did a video about it, which you can check out if you want. And then, to get really obscure, they released a Watch LCD game which was based on the Game Boy version of Donkey Kong. He's even got those little wires you can spin around and jump off and everything. These, uh, these aren't actually my hands by the way before you think that, but yeah, figured I'd quickly mention these. Uh, but now, it's time for the anti-climax, the final version of Donkey Kong. And it's on the Game Boy Advance. Released on the e-reader and then in the NES Classic series, this is essentially just a port of a NES game, but with a few differences. The visuals have been slightly changed in order to fit on the screen. Everything looks uh, kind of stubby, but it's sort of cute in a strange way. And the game is also modified to save your high scores, which uh, is nice, I suppose. Apparently, the NES version didn't do that. But yeah, it's just the same game with some slight modifications. Uh, 
Exciting, right? They also charged full price for this back in the day, which is just daylight robbery. Otherwise, though, uh, I give it the same score as for NES version. An 8. And well, that's it. Here we are. I'm glad you stuck around, or uh, to skip to the end, either's fine with me, but this was certainly a journey alright. It wasn't just a case of playing these games for like 5 seconds and then moving on. I had to get good at these, I spent time on these, even the bad ones, well most of them. I played so much bleeding Donkey Kong that you have no idea, but alas we are done, almost anyway, because it's time we rank all these games in order, from worst to best, in what I'm dubbing the Donkey Kong high score table. Here we go ladies and gentlemen, at the bottom, at number 20, is the MS-DOS version. At number 19 is the Apple II version. Number 18 is the Coleco Tabletop. Number 17 is the Atari 2600. At number 16 is the Intellivision. At number 15 is the ZX Spectrum. And at number 14 is the MSX. And at number 13 is the American version on the Commodore 64. And then above that is the Coleco version. And at number 11 is the Atari 7800, or however you say it. I've probably been saying that wrong the whole video. And at number 10 is the Texas Instruments TI-994-4A. And at number 9 is the Commodore VIC-20 version. And then, the Commodore 64 European version. And at number 7 is the Atari 8-bit family series of computers. And then you have the Game Boy Advance version, and then the Game & Watch version, and then at number 4 you've got the Coleco Adam version. And now for the top 3. At number 3 you have the Nintendo Entertainment System. And at number 2 you have the Amstrad CPC. And at the top, to the surprise of nobody, is the original arcade game. And we're done. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. And maybe it's inspired you to check out some versions of Donkey Kong you didn't even know existed. Now to never play Donkey Kong again. Till the next video probably. I guess this is my life now. Bye. And the patron of the week, well, I guess month, uh, let's be honest, is Fiery Garfield, who is basically Garfield if you set him on fire. But, uh, please don't set Garfield on fire, that would be quite bad.